la 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 Is it on, Maddie? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Well, greetings. I am Professor Balthazar Pinch. I uh, am teaching uh, Shakespeare, and I am a playwright. Oh, I'm seeing into another dimension right now. Okay, this is uh, this is good. We picked a we picked a good location to film this. I'm I'm not used to the uh, uh, video camera world. I'm more of the live performance. I am for the stage. I'm being told by my students that this is important. That I I, I move to other mediums for my work. I have been uh, working on Twelfth Night recently. I've decided that this should be set in space. I believe that this puts a very unique creative twist on things. I think it's going to turn out very, very professional. The stars have aligned and one of my students has informed me that her girlfriend has rediscovered her long-lost twin. This is truly a sign that Twelfth Night is going to is going to be a, a wonderful production, I think. Energies are aligning. This is one of the Bard's great works. I'm hoping I can do it justice by putting it in space. I think that this will bring out something new and something fresh that we can all enjoy. Shakespeare was one of the greatest playwrights to ever live. The fact that some people, some people, don't believe that he wrote his plays, it baffles me. This whole Edward de Vere thing is just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, Shakespeare wrote his plays. His, his name is on it. This is a ridiculous conspiracy. I think that he will be vindicated. And I may be the one to do it. I'm currently working on what I believe will vindicate Shakespeare. And it is my one-man production. This will bring justice for William Shakespeare. And anyone who has thought that he hasn't written his plays, you know who you are. I have some knowledge of trees. This tree is a dashwood. It's a very, uh, very old tree. This tree here is twinned, much like the twins who are rent asunder in the shipwreck in Twelfth Night. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him. An important aspect of the acting process is a healthy mind, and a healthy body leads to a healthy mind. Are you sure you want to film this? Of course. This is part of the process. Okay. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. Then the whining schoolboy, with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail, unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrows. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths, and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation. Even in the cannon's mouth, and then the justice, in fair round belly with good cape on lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side. His youthful hose well saved a world too wide, for his shrunk shank and his big manly voice, turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all, that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion sans teeth sans eyes sans taste sans everything